Okay, so we're live. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. I'm Matt Bork. Thanks very much for the feedback regarding our interview with Dennis Morphy. Dennis is an absolute gem, you know. I just think he's a fascinating mind. I'm glad people really liked the interview. I love the book. I would highly recommend it. It's well worth getting for Christmas. And it's a deadly interview. He's a fascinating guy. I even laughed at the fact that I called him Dennis Ryan. <laughs> so that was sound as well. Uh, the interview today is with a gentleman who was an absolute fucking gem. I love doing the interview with him. It was Paddy Brosnan. A lot of people call him Paddy Bronson. I remember I listened to a few weeks ago, I listened to Paddy Hewlett and, and he thought I think he was going to call him Paddy Bro- Bro- Bronson. Bronson. There was an old film years ago, but I got it right. Fucking super proud of myself. One week anyway, I got it right. Uh, Paddy Brosnan. Legend, legend, uh, meditation, mindful practitioner and teacher, uh, Buddhist, author, Zen warrior. But uh, yeah, he, he wrote the book, This Works. I read the book. Uh, I left it to about a day or two before I was due to need to finish it off because I really then can feel the book. I remember every piece of it. I take loads of notes. I would read a couple of weeks in advance. I forget about it. I'd actually lose the passion of the book. But I loved it. I absolutely loved the book. Uh, I definitely recommend it. Uh, the book was brilliant. And then to meet him, it makes the book even better. Right? He really has this ability to bring mindfulness. Very simplistic. I don't know if it's the tone he uses, is the language, his attitude. He doesn't take himself fucking serious. Uh, he's got tons of knowledge. And in the book, right, he relates a lot of stuff to his family and he talks about his family and how he, he blends that in. And he, he talked to us about that in the interview as well. And that really hooked me. Uh, my, my attention span is not great for books. And if I'm not hooked straight away, I'll just drop the book. But that got me once he started talking about his family and, and, and then was implementing his knowledge of mindfulness, meditation, uh, awareness. And he, he, he goes right through awareness and uh, mindfulness. And then also talks about the types of meditation that you can use. And there's loads of different types uh, that you can try. You know, you can try body breathing, body breathing, you know, the Zen meditation, love and kindness, all this kind of stuff. And yeah, I really thoroughly enjoyed the interview. Uh, I possibly could have done two hours of them. I possibly could have come up about 50 questions out of the book. I just love that that's the kind of stuff that I'm passionate about. And again, he has this unique way of delivering his message and he's, he's doing workshops all around Ireland. He's getting thousands and thousands and thousands of people going to his workshop. And it's actually funny. This is how he came across my radar. I was following his, his Instagram page. I was looking at him. I saw like the work he does. And I got chatting to a woman in the job and she was asking me at his workshop. And that morning I was thinking of sending Patty a message, asking him to come on the podcast. And I bumped into this woman and she said she was at his workshop. And I said, that's mad. I was going to text him this morning. So I said to myself, you know what? That's synchronicity. Uh, I might as well send her a message. Sent her a message. True to his word. Sent me a book. Sent me a signed copy. We also have uh, a book for a competition. We're going to give away in a raffle a signed book. And he just came on the podcast. It wasn't a ticky box exercise. He really loves what he's doing. He's passionate about it. He oozes, oozes fucking genuineness. He's just a decent, decent guy. And you can just tell it. You can, I can just smell it off people. So it was a fantastic interview. I love it. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the interview. Give us your feedback. Let us know what you t- think. Send us messages on Instagram. Send us messages on Facebook. Give us some reviews on iTunes. You know, we really need those stuff. And I love the feedback. I get a lot of feedback in regards to the videos I do on Instagram and Facebook and not so much Twitter. We just use Twitter as for advertising, another form of advertising. I mean... Place we, we talk about our podcast and the work that I do, like the, the, the vlogs, and uh, would be Instagram or Facebook. So if you're on Facebook or Instagram, head over there, join us, uh, Matt Bork, uh, me, or Magic Minds podcast. Yeah, so that's really about this interview. Uh, as always, I want to thank Noel Roy from Rooney Media, uh, me and my man, we need any graphic designs, there you are. Shannon's Hope Line, Mental Health Warriors, uh, Liberty's Photos, Andy now is with us on the podcast. Uh, give us a dig out. He's an absolute fantastic photographer, doing loads of work for the web. So he's some fantastic pictures. So if you need any wedding pictures done, parties, uh, communions, christenings, fucking you just want a few selfies in your gaff, he's your man. Uh, check him out, libertiesphotos.ie, or I think that's his website. Well, I'll put the notes 
I'll put the, the information on our notes, but the check he's on Instagram, Facebook, he's all over the place. He's a bit of a social media or like myself. So that's it. Just remember, we're coming up the silly season. Mind your little self. This is the prime time to start thinking to yourself, how grateful am I for all that I have? But this month, people start getting into the mentality, I don't have enough love, I don't have enough clothes, I don't have enough this, I don't have enough that. Pressure, 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 pressure. Keep reminding yourself, you have enough. Do you need to have more on the 26 and the 27 when it's all over? You've all those bills to pay. No, no, you've loads. Just mind your little self around this time. Have a good time. All you need around this time of the year is love, compassion, understanding, empathy, soundness. Don't be an asshole. That's the moral of the story. Enjoy the interview. Have a fantastic day. Okay, so we're live. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. I'm Matt Bork. On the show today, my special guest is Paddy Brosnan. Paddy, what's the crack? How the hell are you, Matt? Are you good? I'm absolutely fantastic. Thanks How for having me, man. Appreciate it. I'm absolutely super excited because this is just something I love. Spirituality, mindfulness, awareness. I'm mm-hmm. deadly. Oh, and then you have me on. <laughs> We were about to enlighten me. I'm, I'm going to fucking levitate after Fair enough. Yeah, no but pressure. If the two of us are not bouncing out of here, there's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get back to your Buddhist and your Zen warrior badge. Guys, I've asked Paddy to come on the show today because Paddy is a Buddhist, an author of an amazing book, which is This Works. I read it. It's a fantastic book. I will do a, I will do a review of this later, but hopefully the stuff that we cover it today will do that too. But it'll really get in depth to what I love about it. Uh, I say he's an author, he's also a, a mindfulness practitioner and an absolute Zen warrior. Namaste. Wow. Yeah, that's a well, title. Yeah. Well, I didn't know I was any of those things. Yeah, well, there you go. You'll probably wear superhero <laughs> jacks on the end of the coming to do your Zen warrior shit. Saving people about night time. <laughs> <laughs> Where nobody can see me. <laughs> Come here. <clears throat> the, I absolutely love the book. Um, Thank you. And we'll get into that later on. Uh, Look, give us a give us an insight to to life before your spiritual journey that led you to that point. Yeah, I was a uh, financial services warrior. I was, and it was very important. <laughs> and you were modest. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, but I was very important. Um, so before this happened, I was, um, yeah, I worked in financial services, and I worked in. Um, personal finance for high net worth individuals. So looking after um, the personal money of very wealthy people. Right. That's essentially what I did. Um, and I was very well paid. And if, if you were looking at this lifestyle from the outside, it was excellent. I, you know, I lived in Eastern Europe where I was being paid a lot of money and the cost of living was like nothing. So you could literally, literally live like a king. Um, on a normal wet Irish salary if you like um, and I was being paid more than much more than that so yeah yeah like this private planes being sent for me and all it was amazing amazing wow mm. uh, that's unreal so look you talk about and I, I, I've listened to some of your videos that you've, you've talked about about your journey and you said 15 years ago you were pissed off you were I know, angry I know what, I, what I said was I was an asshole Okay, I was being nice to you. No, don't. Okay, I was an You're asshole. asshole. All right, asshole. <laughs> why? What was the why? What What was that? Did you get to the root of that? I, I, I don't think so. I, you know, I have to be really honest. I, I, I don't think so. And I don't care what the root of it was, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. I think, I think we spend a lot of time, um, and I have this sort of argument with, with, with counsellors and, and uh, uh, psychologists and psychologists who are all friends of mine, they're obsessed with having people examine stuff and find out where it came from. Who cares? If you can get over it, leave it a hell alone. It's, it, it's like walking past dog shit on the street and then going back and poking it a bit just to see, you know, it's like, why would you do that? What, is the, what would be the point in that? So, <laughs> um, so no, I, I, I don't think I ever got to look at Essentially, I was an asshole because I wasn't happy. Now then, that leads to why you're unhappy. That's the bit that I don't know. I'm happy now. Why do Why do you want me to talk about that? You know, mm-hmm. like and and literally, if if I knew, I would genuinely talk about it. But I've never bothered trying to find out. What I tried to do was try to find a way to 
get happy rather than figure out why I was unhappy. Now, there is an argument that you need to know one, you know, to be able to achieve the other. I don't buy that all the time. I think it's relevant sometimes, but it's not relevant in every situation and it wasn't relevant in mine. Yeah. <clears throat> so then would you be in agreement with the term, it's not about the fall, it's about the landing? Oh yeah, and the climb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's literally about the climb. So, so it has nothing... Sometimes you, I understand you do have to go back and you do have to examine the, but not not to the extent that we are obsessed with in Western society. And 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 if you look at, you know, other cultures and the way they they deal with uh, trauma in your past, or and I don't have any that I'm aware of, but um, or you know, just that sense of unsettledness, it literally isn't poking around in the dog shit. That is not what they do. You know, they 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 shift you from, you know. The trajectory that you're on to another one mm. to a better one mm -hmm. and it's it's literally changing lanes it's not well let's go back down the lane you came from and see what was down there well no just change into another one does that make sense 100 percent. it's like when you're having a negative thought you, you can choose not to have it you can choose oh, yeah. to think of something else mm -hmm. do you know what i mean you can choose not to think about the, the red balloon you can think about something else you know yeah. you don't think out of from purple spots yeah do you know like yeah. you're really happy about really is it that simple yeah it is <laughs> yeah it yeah, is it like, actually is look no, I've, it really is I've, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this uh, i've had childhood trauma right now and i've delved into and uncovered what I, I i needed to know but i don't go back there not because it hurts like that because i'm more about now the climb the landing and growing from it yeah, you, I'm, I'm assuming you saw that there was no point in talking to dog shit, it's still going to smell. Oh, 100%. Yes. You know, really, it, it, it's opened my eyes to it. It's about it. It's about the, the landing and then, as you said, the climb forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a, it's a, it's a great point you make. So, can you talk us through then the path that you took then? Because they, they seem like polar apart. <laughs> like the life that you are. You, they are. You know what I mean? You're jetting around the world looking Gucci. And uh, I am wearing Gucci. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you were modest as fuck, obviously. Yeah, oh, no one was shocking and forth. Oh, <laughs> shocking and forth. Oh, listen. I you was, had no shits, Paddy. You I had was no so shits. far up my own bottom that it was an awful, it, it, it's a miracle I ever pulled myself out. Yeah, it was a Yahoo. Yeah, it is a, it's an awful, how, how it pulled itself out of there is beyond me. But, um, so what happened was, but it happened, I, look at, there's nothing unique about this story. I was an asshole to everybody around me, and I wasn't even a happy asshole, and that's what I realized, I wasn't happy. I didn't, still didn't know I was an asshole, but I just thought I was unhappy. Mm -hmm. uh, later, friends told me, you were an asshole. You didn't think about telling me that when I was an asshole, did you? But no, because... But they you could have helped you develop your awareness. Yeah, but I probably, and they were right, I wouldn't have accepted it, would I? You weren't ready for that. Not at all, no. Um, but I realized I wasn't happy. So then what I did was I changed everything outside. You know, that's where, that's why I'm unhappy. It's because everything out here is wrong, you see. Blame is easier than acceptance. That's what I did. So I did that. Uh, so I changed my job. I came back to Ireland and I worked in financial services in Ireland. Still unhappy. Shock. Uh, then I said, right, it must be financial services. That must be the problem. So I said, right, I'll do something completely different. So I trained to be a dog groomer. And over the dog grooming business. You're not going to fucking believe this. I was still unhappy. Oh, jeez, a shock horror, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, I was still unhappy. Then, uh, although temporarily happy, if you know what I mean, because yeah. you know this must be working in there. Bit of a high. Yeah. yeah uh, from and then, uh, oh, I I changed very little. Literally anything that you could change outside of actually doing the work that needed to be done, I did all of that first, and then. I slowly but surely, because I'm genuinely not that clever, I slowly but surely came to the realisation that this wasn't working, so there must be something else. So then I went and I looked at all the sort of thought change um, stuff that people normally dive into, like I watched The Secret and, um, you, you know, thought, well, that, that's good, so if I just sit here and go, Jesus, I really like a car now, one will come outside with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is... There are lots of people who are who are very um, doesn't work. Well, there have been lots of people who who who, who I used like to it. sit out there waiting on Haley Berry to call over. Did she? Never, she? No, I've never called. Ah. 
Yeah, my tags are lost. Wrong. <laughs> Google doesn't recognize this yeah. face. No, you know. no, I tried to get here. Does, that's that's, that's my, like that's Barry what, didn't come out. Google what, fucked me up. Halle Berry was genuinely on the way yeah. and couldn't fucking <laughs> find you. Ah, huh? uh, Google, you're bastard. That's what happened. Yeah. Oh, think of how your life could have changed. You can't block me. <laughs> if, if, Google can't block me. Yeah. Yeah. if only Google works, think about how your life would have changed. Sabotage me. But, um, where was I? <laughs> Before you got cock blocked by Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were on the trajectory of where it all kind of changed. We oh, were yeah, just, so, you were, so you were, yeah. You were watching dogs. Yeah, so uh, love that. Uh, but uh, then, you know, all that stuff wasn't working, so I went to thought change stuff like affirmations and um, whatever it is. And <clears throat> then finally hit on, 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 you know, did some meditation and I thought, you know, this feels better. Then did some, you know, mindfulness and thought, okay. And this is back 17, 18 years ago then when nobody heard of mindfulness. Mm. It was actually called it single pointed concentration meditation at the time. Oh, geez. Yeah, they rebranded it, thankfully, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, but, <laughs> okay. but um, I hit on that and, and, and those two things seem to help. So I thought, okay, there's something, might be something in this, you know, heebie jeebie voodoo stuff that, yeah, you know, yeah. that, uh, Hippy dippy. Hippy dippy stuff, yeah. So then I started to have a look at them and I looked at where they came from, you know, the origin of these practices. And obviously, meditation predates Buddhism, uh, mindfulness uh, does and doesn't in some ways. But when you look at where they all sort of, you know, converged, if you like, whether they came from past or, or, or are now being brought back into that tradition, it doesn't matter. Um, they all seem to hit Buddhism at some point. So I then had a clever moment, which is unusual for me, and I went, okay, maybe you should have a look at that stuff, because if it all, if it all seems to be sort of bubbling from there somehow, having a look at that stuff might be worth a go, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm. See, see what I did there? <laughs> Sharp as a tack. can tell you this. Blue one. tack. Blue tack, yeah. <laughs> so then I had a look at Buddhism, found that to be massively confusing, because it is when you first start. So gave up on that for a while and just, you know, did my meditation and mindfulness developed that. And then went back to uh, having a look at Buddhism because I thought, no, there must be something here, you, you know. Keeps calling, keeps calling. Yeah, calm. yeah, had a look at Buddhism. Then I went and got myself some extraordinary teachers like the Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, did, you go, did you go to Plum Village? Oh, God, yeah. 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 Wow. Um, I love to go there someday. Um, Thai is, uh, Thai is Thich Nhat Hanh's nickname. It just means teacher in Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, Thai is currently actually back in Vietnam at uh, the Hai Chi Temple, which is his root temple. So he's back there. Uh, we just got pictures uh, of him two days ago. He's looking excellent for a man who was supposed to be dead five years ago. Mm, he was sick him. for a while, wasn't he? he? But he had a stroke, he had a massive stroke. Wow. Um, but um, they gave it like he was, you know, he was dead. Okay. Uh, according to everybody, all the doctors and everything, he was dead five years, four or five years ago. He looks shock and healthy to me for a man who's supposed to be dead. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I got myself some nice teachers. They kind of unraveled it a little bit, but not much. Um, and I'm thinking my next book, genuinely, my next book is probably going to be, I don't think it's going to be a bestseller, I'll be honest with you, but it's going to be how to be a Buddhist in a non-Buddhist place. Love it. Because it's just so massively confusing. Like, if, if you are in Thailand, where 88% of the population is Buddhist, you know, it's easy to find... How, how to practice or what the practices of Buddhism yeah. are you know it's the culture it's the norm but, you know but if you live in Kildare where I grew up uh, it's not so easy do you know oh, no 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 <laughs> fuck it out <laughs> you wouldn't be one to go around here in your robes either around the flats no, as a Buddhist no, you know? no but the, actually you would because I'd imagine if you did you would get an amazing welcome to be honest with you yeah um, you should be out of mind this thing uh, he's up his old tricks again yeah <laughs> But like, and, and obviously in Ireland we have some great centres and stuff like that, but, but Buddhism is, 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 you need a variety in order to, you know, to capture the essence. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Was there a point in your, in your training, your 15 years of travelling through this, that you went, wow, I have this, I'm, I'm being aware, I'm being mindful, <clears throat> but it's not just, it's not just an intellectual awareness now at this point. 
from being it rather than doing it because I know a lot of my spiritual uh, stuff at the moment is a lot of intellect and doing I just need to be more mm. um, there was lots of times during that you know particularly say the first 10 years where uh, if you were to ask me that question then I would say oh yeah, yeah, lots of them. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly being now thank you very much you know what I mean <laughs> which, which, which is obviously not wasn't the case yeah, yeah. so there is this sort of um thing where you 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 feel that that you're you know encompassing the the, the practice and that you are the practice you you are as they you know in Zen we say you are the practice um but there was probably only glimpses or well there probably were sustained periods and glimpses of you know as well um <clears throat> but it's it's really I suppose in the last five or six years where I can see now now by the way other people will see it before you oh yeah so your friends and family will notice like and, and you'll get asked you'll get stuff will be said to you like a are you all right you know what no you're just very something is there is there no okay yeah I do get that and you're sort of no I'm fine and then I'd be thinking, why don't fuck a man or what? So, you want, right? no, mm, so what we are. Exactly, yeah. So, so, so when you're going through those sort of sustained periods where you are being the practice, if you like, um, that's it, yeah, that's when people ask you, you know, are you okay? You, you know, everything all right to do. <laughs> and they, they'll give you that look and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong at home. <laughs> That fucking everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but but you, you, you get me, you yeah. know what? Uh, but it's only I suppose in the last f- uh, four or five years where I have noticed, maybe five or six years where I have noticed where, because the the entire the entire point behind any uh, any authentic practice is to negate reactivity and to um, uh, completely embrace the um, acceptance of whatever the hell is happening is happening. Look, that, that, I don't care what sort of, if it doesn't do that, just leave the hell alone. So you you start to, to watch yourself almost not reacting, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, that's where mine has become. Mm. And, then, and then that becomes your natural sort of way of, of existing. And, and when you kind of get to that stage, that's when you sort of know that you are you are you are being the the practice. You know that really? that, that that you're living the practice. Um, and and I would have said you know for the last whatever four five six years, um, that has gradually gotten stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, and I I would notice it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Brilliant. I think I'm leaving kindergarten school then. I think I have that grade then. I think I'm, I'm, I've become the observer of that and I still get lost and fucking, I do go a bit bonkers sometimes. But I have that one. I've become the watcher of my thoughts or my reactions uh-huh. to things. Yeah. Here's one and it's going to segue segues nicely onto this. Jack Cornfield talks about, you know, enlightenment and if you want to test your enlightenment, because sometimes I think I'm all zen and I'll have a sword uh-huh. and then when I meet certain friends or family that goes out the window yeah and uh, if you want to test your enlightenment go spend a week Forget with your family parents, yeah yeah How, how's that for you uh, um it's it, it it's really cool um th- th- there isn't an, there isn't a lot i'll be honest with you now that that will that will poke me out of of Zen-ness. of where i want to be yeah. yeah um there isn't a whole ton that will poke me out of um or you know, you, but you don't have to go spend time with your family if you want to. You know, just do something that used to stress the shit out of you. Mm. You know, do that, and and even if because sometimes outwardly you are you are acting the same as you always did out of habit almost, but inwardly you're not feeling stressed, you're not feeling annoyed, you're not feeling pissed off. And that can confuse the shit out of people because the particular people close to you can say, well, there wasn't much difference when we were going to the airport with 27 children last week, was there? <laughs> okay. and, and what they mean is it wasn't enough, but out, because you're still going, okay, I need everybody in the line, and everybody in the, you know what I mean? So outwardly, you're still doing it. But inwardly, there's no, there's no chaos. There's no, yeah. um, and there's, <clears> not <throat> a, there's not a lot of petrol being poured on your feet and you're engulfed yeah. by rage. Yeah. Yeah, deadly. How is your family with it? Like, you know, your wife and your kids, do they practice mindfulness? Do they practice? <laughs> Just do what I tell them. 
Uh, do they practice mindfulness awareness? Are they on a spiritual journey? Uh, are, you, are you just obviously my wife is is, is an autonomous individual. <clears throat> um, I'm not obviously uh, from her point of view. I'm I'm a husband, so I clearly can't be autonomous. But my wife is <laughs> is an autonomous individual, so um, I would never try to. Um, in, you, you know, instill or insist or anything else because I think in their lives, insanity to be perfectly honest. Yeah. With. with the kids, um, we I have two boys. We have two boys. Um, and they are nine and twelve. Oh, the Jays have got that I right. You got that right. Yeah. I'll let it out for you if there's not. Thanks. Send me all the yeah, yeah. <laughs> There, and. <laughs> Are you sure you're okay, it's funny. Um, one of them I'm not terrible at. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Wrong job, that's what yeah. you yeah. Jeremy Goyle. Yeah, different one. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so in, in the morning I wake them up and um, they pop up into their bed into half lotus. <laughs> no, they don't. They actually, they're in bunk beds and they just sit up in half lotus. And I'll spend like a minute just in a sort of a really simple little meditation like you know feel your face or your breath or you know so i always wake up and i say good morning today's tuesday it's a brand new day we've never had this one before you know this is a day that you can you look forward to so take a minute just get rid of grumpiness that you know might be there for me dad waking you up yeah. and just you know you know bring your awareness sensation in your face it's a minute or two and then at most and then we'll just wander on from there and we also have um, during the winter so we'll be starting now during the summer it doesn't happen because they're just outside mm -hmm. but um, during winter we have a family sangha and it's a sangha is just a collection of Buddhists getting together to do mad stuff <laughs> mad strange <laughs> shit all together community isn't it yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a family sangha so we'll, we'll all go into my meditation room and um, just in case you miss that I know yeah, I have a meditation now. Um, so you <laughs> you're still Gucci, aren't you? You're yeah, still like yeah, your boy is toys. Yeah, uh, but um, um, yes. and, and actually, what's mad? Just a quick aside. What's mad is like you know when some people, you know when their friends come over, yeah, and their friends go, "What's in that room?" And to them, it's just perfectly normal. Oh, that's what that was meditation room, and you can see the other kids going, "What?" And it's like, yeah. that's my dad's meditation room. What? <laughs> Oh, I'm in there. But but it's like you mean your dad doesn't have one? Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's just so normal and natural to the vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so it's so uh conscious, kind of black and white, polarized to what life used to be for me, you know. Me too. You know, oh me too. I was marched to mass on a Sunday whether I wanted to go to it or not. And fucking memorized the, the read and you know, like, what was the read today? And you were like, I'm at you uh first. Very sweetie for and there's nothing wrong with that at all, yeah. and, and you know, um, whatever whatever people choose. Oh yeah. But during the winter, then sorry, on Tuesday nights we have a family sign where we just come in and we do a little bit of meditation as a family, again age appropriate for the kids, and uh, the eldest one will read, um, um, like, um, uh, there's little books for kids, you know. One of them was actually questions that kids put to take that hand, and he read the answers to those and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> So that's their involvement. Now, what they want to do with that or how they want to uh, embrace that or not is entirely up to them. And it's not something that I would have any. Um, my eldest is in confirmation class this year. And we asked him, did he want to do his confirmation? And he said, no. And I thought, hmm, that's, you know, because besides the, the, the wonderful spiritual aspect of it, there's tends to be a load of money that goes with it as well. Yeah, so, yeah. So what, use your internet. Yeah, so I was going, that's odd. Yeah. And I said to him, why don't you want to do your confirmation? And he said, well, first of all, I don't believe it. Um, he said, I don't understand it. And, and he's 12, you know, and he said, secondly, I think it'd be really disrespectful for me to do it. Um, it'd be really disrespectful against the people who do believe in it. Wow. And I went, well, whatever the fuck you've done with my son. 
give him back. Get out now and give him back. You know, so... And his age is, is his teacher was, was telling me that, you know, his little brother was having an absolute, um, in, my, in our family they call shit fits, you know, when you start panicking about stuff. He was having a shit fit in school because he grabbed somebody's hood and he torn it and he thought he was going to be in big trouble when he came home, you know. Um, he wasn't in big trouble, but, you know, there, was, there were consequences. Um, not, not, not for that, though. That was just a bit of play grip, so. Um But... His teacher went to his older brother and uh, the eldest one brought him into inside of the classroom and sat him down and said, look, at, we don't know what's going to happen, you know, in the future when you go home, but we do know there's nothing wrong there. So just focus on that. And I went, fuck you, man. Yeah. Yeah, like monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, and it was literally like, how many times have I told him that when he just looked at me like this? I should love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's mad. You throw up shit at the wall and stick. Yeah, and he's like yeah. looking at you like you're an absolute gobshite, you know, going, you're looking at him, you know, you're, you're working through stuff at him and he's going, seeing right through you. Yeah, I'm not even looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's obviously going in somewhere into the mental health. That's mad. So, brilliant. So we don't, you know, the, the, I think your question was about, you know, Buddhism. The so, family. yeah, so, um, and the Buddhism and the family and the spiritual journey and all the rest of it. Buddhism isn't something you can join or do or take part. There's nothing, you know, there's no organization that, you know, you don't have to jump twice over a stick and cross your legs three times. There's none of that sort of stuff. It's just a practice that you take on yourself yeah. in whatever form feels comfortable for you. And that's, that's about as much as we're engaged. In the and live by the philosophy of it, you yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's what, that's as, about as much as we're engaged in the case. That's fantastic. I love it. I love the, the and that's even segue, segue brilliant onto the book. Uh, and what I like about the book is you're given personal stories, you're given it from your own life and with your mm. kids, and you reflect in the kids and other parts. And that's what I love about the book: the simplicity and then the lived experience. What 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 brought you to, to that idea of doing it that way? The book, yeah, because <laughs> because an editor said do it that way. Ah, sure, <laughs> bro, I know did this, Granny. You know, you give, <laughs> you, you've opened your you've opened your personal life. You know mm. your your personal stories, your kids, because you talk about some of them in here, like mm. you did now. Mm. But then you blend in the whole education and wisdom around awareness and mindfulness, and I love that about it. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I think I think you you need look at one of the things that I didn't want people to be able to say yeah. is well, it's okay for him. You know, he's not like me. He gets to sit in his fucking meditation room, meditating the head off himself, you know, humming and humming half the day, and then, you know, going for nature, walks in nature and sitting before beside waterfalls and talking to unicorns. I didn't want people to be able to say that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wanted them, I, I wanted people to understand wife, kids, mortgage, ESB, net, gas networks, or whatever the hell they're called this week, you know, all those bills come into our house. Yeah. You know, my wife has a real job. Yeah. You know, um, and you can still ha do all of that, but change your perspective and how you look at things yeah. to make to make your life so much easier, to make your life so much calmer, to make your life and and the lives of those that you love and care about better. Uh, and I don't mean materialistically better. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean better, properly better. So, <clears throat> that the only way you can really do that is by literally showing people, you know, yeah, if you come to my, one of my workshops, you, yes, I'm on a stage and there's 400 people there and that's all great, but I'm still going to, like, li li the last workshop I did, do you know what I did before I left the house? Hung out the washing. No, put the washing in the washing machine, that's exactly what I did. Like literally the last uh, the last thing I did before I left the house. I love the washing story. Oh that. yeah, uh, the, the last thing I did at five o'clock in the morning before I left the house was, you know, my wife said, "Did you know the washing last night?" You know, you know and then. Did she not know you were a superhero and you were yeah. born? Yeah, no. <laughs> Fucking hang out watching. <laughs> you can't tell some people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's no talking. There's no. It's just, and you know. You're all about the bright lights. Yeah, and she's like about washing and I'm going, that's for the ordinary people. I have a stage to get to. <laughs> you know who I am, darling. 
<laughs> Somebody, somebody's going to take a close up. Um, uh, but at the same time, <clears throat> yeah, all that happens. But at the same time, I still go back and and do all that. And there's no reason you can't. Yeah. So what I try to do in the book is go. Here's here's a shitload of normal life, and here's the stuff that you don't think is normal, but actually is if you just give it a little chance. Mm, brilliant. Absolutely fun. I love that about it. And that, for me, that hooks me. Because I've got books out there with knowledge and information and technical stuff to do, whether it be mindfulness, whether it be strength and conditioning and nutrition. But what gets me is the person story. Mm. The hook, and then this is how I applied it. Mm. This is the story, this is how I applied it. And that gets me. And I, you know, and I think that's why I think you're very relatable to people is that, because you have that in you. And it's important. I think a key story that you, you touch on in here and it really brought home to me and I could reflect as a father when you're playing with your son and he, he talks about, you know, you're the passenger. Mm. Would you share that? Shut the bit? door, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that. this actually goes back to one of your earlier questions when you asked me, you know, did I have any moments throughout my, you, you know, mm. journey, whatever the hell that is. The road um, to Damascus. You know, you know, it sounds like I'm on the X Factor, doesn't it? How is your journey? Uh, but, um, <laughs> Uh, I was playing uh, this is this again is oh, what age is it would have been three so six years ago probably mm. and I was playing with the youngest one on the floor and at that stage I thought now you know I, I, I've, I have this thing you know what I mean I'm, yeah yeah I'm, it's in the bag I am shit out of this whole living with awareness and you know you know fully present and you know you know being the practice I have this you know absolutely I'm the dogs at this stuff, you know. And then my three-year-old, we were, because kids up until about, you know, the age of cognitive awareness, live mindfully. You've never heard a child say, geez, I'm really concerned about the events of next Tuesday. It doesn't happen, do you know what I mean? They're living in the moment, they're living in, in, in whatever the hell is happening now. Mm. And even if they're worried about something, they're worried about it from the point of view of now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they're not, they're not worried about the consequences, they're worried about the, the only thing they know is that they're feeling that way now, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and even at that, they need to be a little bit older to get to that stage. But certainly when they're three, four, five, they're fully present, they're fully aware, they're just doing whatever the hell they're doing now. And that's where their attention is, that's where their awareness is. So we were on the car, on the mat, playing with a truck. He said, you know, Dad, do you want to get in? Do you want to get, um, come into Dublin? I'm going to um, get some wood. And I went, yeah, why not? You know. Oh, that's do for next time. Yeah. But might as well. And uh, he said, "Yeah, all right, hop in." He had this little, little truck bit, tiny little thing. He drove it in the carpet, and um, about two or three minutes later, you know, we were going down the motorway apparently, and he said, uh, "Or we were going onto the motorway," and he said, uh, "Dad, do you ever close your door?" Because I'd gotten into the truck, hadn't closed the door apparently. And when you look at that, you just think that. That child was just 100% there. You know what I mean? And the door was open. That child was 100% there. And if I'd been 100% there, like I thought I was, like, you know, fucking genius me, I would have closed the door, actually. You, you know what I mean? You were playing the game, <clears throat> playing the father, playing with his kid, rather yeah. than being in the 100%. game. 100%. 100%. Oh, I could really relate that. I was like, I'm down here playing, I'm not. No, you're just participating as a father playing, but you're not actually playing the game. No, you're not. No, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you weren't here. You weren't here. You know, physically you are. Mentally, you're probably 50% here. But there's 50% you're going, Jesus knows where. That is fucking <laughs> mad, isn't it? <laughs> Makes to be taught by your three year old as well. Yeah, and that really is awareness. That's being present. That is the essence of being in the here and now. Mm -hmm. There was another lovely part of the book where you talk about, you know, lifting the veil, uh, lifting the veil of thought to reveal the now, you know, and it moves you away from what we talked earlier about distorted visions, labeling, default mode. Could we talk a bit more about that? Yeah, you see. When I teach, the only thing I teach is that all suffering, it doesn't matter what it is, but all human suffering comes from wanting and not wanting. So wanting stuff that you don't have, you know, 
and in, 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 in psychology it's called a hedonistic treadmill where you know I'll be happy when I get the new phone I'll be happy when I get the if new and boyfriend then. if and then yeah if and you then. know and, and we're sort of postponing <coughs> happiness until that future point because Jesus you know it would be shocking if we were happy now that would be no point that at all so what we'll do is we'll just postpone that a little bit until you know so it's that wanting and then not wanting whatever situation person or place that you are not wanting that to be present <clears throat> so this wanting and not wanting, if you want to boil that down to one word, what it really is, is resistance to reality. There is a reality there. You don't have that thing, person, situation. That's your reality. You resist that by wanting it. This thing, person, situation, place is here, and you don't want it, so you resist that reality by trying to push it away. And all human suffering boils down to resisting the reality that is right in front of you. All human um, suffering boils down to that one salient point. And what we do over time is instead of realizing that, we put these filters up of prejudice and thought and uh, past experience and all sorts of stuff in front of our reality. So we get to the point very quickly where we never actually experience what's actually there. We never experience the person. We never that's actually there. The situation that's actually there, the 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 event, the place, whatever it is, we we are experiencing through this sort of veil of past experiences, opinions, um, assumptions, assumptions, uh, prejudices. prejudices. Absolutely. So we're seeing it through that, uh, <clears throat> and what what building awareness does is it li and, and all of those things by the way past experiences assumptions prejudice they all take the form of thought some sort of thought yeah so what we just put that load of thought between us and the reality that's there in order we we think to make it comfortable and i'll tell you why that happens in a second but it doesn't make us comfortable, it makes us horribly uncomfortable because there's now a juxtaposition between what we know and what we actually experience, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> when, you, when you sort of live with awareness and that's really all you, you work at doing is just as, sl as slowly or as quickly as you can, just dropping all of those veils, just letting them all go, 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 go. The reason, well, you put up these things, these filters between us and reality, is essentially what what we've done is I mean we've pulled off the greatest con job on ourselves because what we've done Matt is we have given responsibility for our happiness to a part of us that has no kin interest in our happiness at all none zero so we have given the sole responsibility for our happiness to our mind. But then the blind monkey drive a car down the hill. No point. It's going to crash. So we and our our mind and our, our, our brain mind interface, which is really what we've given our yeah. happiness to, is interested in one thing and one thing only. And it's not our happiness. It's interested in our survival. survival. It's really good at it. Leave it alone and let it get on with its job. Because it doesn't want to be in charge of happiness. It couldn't care less about happiness. Happiness is, as a matter of fact, most times when we're happy, we're probably doing stuff that the, 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 the mind-brain interface, you know, where those two come together, if they do, really don't want us to be doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like shit that can, you know, harm us, you know? Mm -hmm. But the mind can focus and concentrate on one thing at a time. Just one. You can walk and talk, but you can only focus on one of them, you know? Um, you can breathe and listen, but only you're only focusing on one of those things at any one time. Wow. Um, so we give this function to the mind and that sort of mind brain, and it goes, oh God, you know what? That's not my job. My job is to, <laughs> and, you know, and and it points out to you again and again. I've done a really good job at this. You're still here, asshole, because I'm the one who's making sure that you stay alive. You yeah. know. Um, so you, that the head with your happiness nonsense, I'm going to focus on the whole protection thing. So what the mind then does is, when we come up against a situation that causes us, you know, any sort of um, uh, sense of suffering. So 
even as mild frustration. It doesn't matter what it is. The, 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 the brain will automatically lock that in. That's bad. Yes? And then what it will do is it will scan forever for the rest of your life to situations that are like that. To protect you. And they're bad too. Yeah? Yeah. They're bad as well. And that's where we put up this load of filters between us and reality. And those filters become really, I suppose, dangerous actually yeah. when it's with other people because once your perception of somebody is formed and once the filters are there that person can do whatever they like man. they can change they can become the most enlightened caring loving kind person in the world and you're not going to see it you're never going to see it because you you are only ever going to see what you have decided that person is not what they are and that person's job in life is not to be who you've decided they are. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%. So when you practice awareness and when you practice, um, yeah, as you said earlier on, being the practice, you know, when you, when, you, when you sort of embody that, really what happens is you're just letting all that fall away. And you're, 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 you're directly experiencing the life that's there in front of you, whatever that is. Good and bad. Yeah. Good and bad. <clears throat> Seeing things for what it is, not to what you perceive mm. to be based on the story. That's oh, brilliant, brilliant. I love it. Uh, there's another brilliant analogy you talk about uh, to try to explain mindfulness and being present and aware is the... The story of trying to explain what a strawberry tastes like, mm. or trying to tell somebody it's impossible, what, yeah. or what blue mm. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, had to experience. Blue. Yeah, talk about um, that. And by the way, I, I, uh, the, those are not my stories. Those are those are taken from people who much cleverer than me who taught me. But I mean, when you mindfulness is experiential. So if you're talking to somebody who is viewing their world through the filters of previous experience through the field of filters of opinions and prejudice and, and uh, rumour and whatever else that they're experiencing their world through and then you and, but, and then you start to talk to them uh, or somebody about mindfulness and direct experiencing because that's really what mindfulness mm -hmm. is is the direct experiencing of, of life without those things the problem is that the person doesn't know that they have those filters so now you are literally trying to explain straw, what strawberries taste like to somebody who's never tasted strawberries. And they're looking at you going, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Or, you know, <coughs> it's exactly like trying to explain the colour blue to somebody who's never experienced blue. So, or experienced colour. You know, so you, you might say, well, it's like green. Well, what's green? <laughs> you know, so you just get into this mad sort of a, and really, since I've started teaching, which was um, four years ago, that's all I've really tried to do is to try to explain to somebody how they currently see, because that's how I saw. I mean, I'm not, you know, it's not, no. You're not trying to get them to project <clears throat> into the future. This is what you hope to see. What you're seeing right now is. And, and you're seeing it through filters. And I'll tell you how I know this. That's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what everybody else who's ever done, has, has done previously. And now I can tell you what it's like, and I can tell you how I got from there to there. And I can tell you that I'm never going back there because that's shit. And this is really nice. So I'm staying here, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, but when, when I started to teach, I, 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 and, I, oh, and I said I would only teach when I would, could be useful. Um, and it was only four years ago that I really felt that um, I could be useful. Right. Um, and then I set, you know, um, two parameters but, um, for anything that I do. The first one was that it had to be useful mm -hmm. to other people. And um, the second one was that it had to be um, something that, that, that people expressed in it, you know what I mean, were, were wanted to know about. Um, and as soon as those two things ever stop, or even one of them ever stops, I'll stop. You know? mm. <clears throat> and there's a nice quote that in the book around that whole uh, colour and strawberry is it's not what you do, 
It's what you be. Mm. Like it's just like you can explain an intellect until the fucking cows come home. Yeah. It's about being. Yeah. It really yeah. is. It really you know, is. when we do in society, I know. And you have to is. practice stuff to get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. You have to, you, you have to, you, you know, if you want to build a way, if you want to play the guitar, you do not wander into a shop, buy a guitar, and expect to sit down at home and go, watch this. Yeah, Tony Montana. Yeah, here I am. Yeah. Look at me, go here. That's not how that happens. And awareness and direct perceiving is like mindfulness, whatever, like whatever, it's the same, all the same. That's a skill as well. So you need you need to actually put in some work. Shock horror, sorry, but there is some work involved. Now it's hardly digging ditches. You know, it, it, it's getting to know your own mind and how it operates. That's a little bit of meditation. Mm, we'll touch on that. Yeah. Like We're going down that. A little bit of meditation and then, you know, bringing it into, in, you know, that level of awareness into your everyday life. That's it. That's all it is. Simples. And I'll be honest, I'm, like, I keep saying this and people think that I'm just saying it, you know, you know, to be self-deprecating or, you know, to, but like, honestly, and I mean this, if I can do this shit, I promise you, mm-hmm. everyone can. Yeah. Like, no, no joke. Yeah, I believe in the, in the whole, you know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Mm-hmm. It's simplistic. Simplicity is the highest form of sophistication. Mm. Did yeah. you just call me sophisticated? Yeah, sure, look. Thanks. Just, Thanks just, just, just butter, I'm, like, I'm just buttering you up, Thanks. Paddy. Uh, what, what failures in life have been your greatest teacher? Um... I think uh, being an asshole to people, um, and then I, th- you know, when my eldest was born for the first few years of his life, I pro, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't a great dad. I don't think. It's very honest. With you. Uh, no, I wasn't, um, and that, and I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be that asshole either mm. um, and then I think probably the biggest failure that taught me the most was just not being not being having no sense of contentment happiness mm. worth value you, you know um, I think those three would probably be yeah Fairly close to the top of my list. Brilliant, uh, great. Uh, honestly, I appreciate you sharing your vulnerability. Uh, let's get into it. The meditation. I absolutely love the. You know, you talk about you know the Zen and the non-reactive meditation. I wrote some of these down. Uh, the breath work, the open awareness. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic. Can we cover some of them? No. No. <laughs> no fuck that. <laughs> no for that shit. Uh, yeah, I love them. I'm not being paid enough for that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll get a nice Gucci glass. Thanks. Uh, I had to watch it as well. Uh, yeah, I love the Zen meditation. I just love that. And then the mm. open awareness one. Um, just that, that uh, uh, Zen meditation, um, whenever my youngest one, who's not, whenever he thinks of it, he's supposed to do it every morning. He doesn't think of it. Um, um, there is, we have in our house something called a mindfulness bell. And I live in a three bedroom, so you attach house. And it's on the landing, on a, on a bookcase. And uh, the mindfulness bell is, um, you know, say if, you know, his, his he, he uses it most actually, the youngest one. So if, if his brother and his mom or his brother and me are having a, in, in an argument or something, you know, his brother wants to do something and he's not happening, you know, you ring the mindfulness bell and um, what? And in our house, everybody actually does respect the mindfulness bell. So you just stop what you're doing, yeah. you know? And it's a brilliant way to just calm everybody down. So you just stop what you're doing. And, um, you know, you take three breaths. You become aware of the in-breath and the out-breath for three or four breaths. And then you find that whatever the hell was happening just dissipates away anyway, you know? Because you now have a nine-year-old who's telling you how stupid you are. You know what I mean? Which is oh, which is amazing. Jeez, it's just turning the tide on you, John um, Udemir. Brilliant, though, brilliant. Um, and um, in in the morning time, sometimes he he rings it before he goes to school. He invites the bell to sound in in, in uh, meditation, and but in, in Zen in particular, we invite the bell to sound. We don't hit it, strike it, smack it, kick it. We invite it to sound. 
um, and he invites them down to Sam, and then um, he or his brother will actually do that breathing, breathing in and feel calm, mm. breathing out as well, breathing in and feel calm. We'll do that a few times before they up. Um, but that same meditation is again not mine. It uh, belongs to my um, um, one of my teachers, the uh, Venerable Thich Nhat Han. Uh, he does know that I robbed it. So Good plagiarism. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the kind of, and you cover that in the book. And I completely changed nothing. I, yeah, I and that's what I like about it. it. Yeah, and you, and you quote it in there, Thich Nhat Hanh, Jack Cornfield, all these uh, spiritual Buddhist leaders. Yep. Uh, and that they stole shit from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all way over in Ireland. Come get it if you want. Yeah. Forever an asshole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I like that you talk about the formal can, meditation. Can I just point out, I told them before I stole it. <laughs> Allegedly. It's for a friend. Yeah, well, you can't prove it. <laughs> and I love that in it. And the meditations are class, you know, the meditation, the breath, the body, open, <clears throat> uh, awareness meditation, the Zen meditation, non reactive, walking meditation. The only one I didn't know about was the, the Tong Len meditation and fear. I love I love uh, love a kind of meditation, one of my mm, favorites. Meta meditation, yeah. Yeah, meta bath, Um The Tong Len is, is, is a, a counterintuitive meditation. In the sense that in most meditation practices that are not, um, and uh, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but that are not mindful meditations or are not, you know, part of a traditional meditation. Mm. So in these, in 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 the sort of, um, because meditation is is, is either a traditional source meditation or a sort of a feel good meditation. The, you know, um, so in a lot of the feel good meditations, you have the you know I breathe you know breathing in white light and and. Mm cleansing and all of that sort of stuff um, mm-hmm. um, which certainly would not have any place in a Zen uh, monastery but um, and then you know breathing out all negativity etc 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 whereas Tong Len is the exact opposite but ten, Tong Len is, is part of the uh, Engorda initiation in, in Buddhism and what it does is actually for those of you who like the meta meditation Mm. Tong Len is just an extension of meta meditation. So meta meditation, you send loving kindness to people. Mm. You know, may they be happy, may they be healthy, may they be safe, may they live with ease. And you visualize the different yeah, individual yeah, yeah. people that you want to send uh, loving kindness to. In Tong Len, it's exactly the same, except you reverse the process. So you just imagine. So if you know somebody who is suffering, either physically, mentally, or through a situation, you simply imagine taking that suffering from them and breathing it into yourself. Then bringing it to your heart, to the heart of loving kindness, purifying it, it and bringing it back to Wow, <clears throat> love it. Yeah, but, and that's Tom Den meditation. Yeah, no, one I of my favorite meditations. And I'll tell you why it's one of my favorite meditations. It's, not only is it a formal meditation, it's also a real life meditation, because I break meditation down into two, formal and real life. Um, and Tom Len is both. So if you see, so if you're walking outside here, and you see, you know, uh, uh, somebody struggling with two kids in a pushchair, but she looks like she's going to kill you if you try to help her, mm. which can happen, yeah. you know. Well, yeah. um, then you practice Tom Len right there, walking down the street, and you see that she's suffering, and you breathe that in, and you 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 visualize and and with a genuine. Um, sense of absolute loving kindness for that person mm. you know bring it to the heart to your heart of loving kindness and then bring it and send it back to her with you know um, no suffering you know so you can literally practice it in front of meditation but also walk in the street and read that meditation lovely and that now brings me on to another brilliant story in the book and which will be great for the Irish mammies I love the meditation the mindfulness from mammy Mm. Sure, that's I just thought that was class and just like that you just practice it the mindfulness the awareness boom at any given time and the chance that you probably hear mammy 10 times a day in your so, Irish mammy so what happened was um, um, a GP contacted me and he said um, I want you to speak to this lady um, she's gone through a really tough time I can't her, her medication is, is not going any further um, but I'm, I'm worried, I'm concerned. So I went out to see her um, in her house. 
um, which he arranged. And before I opened the door, it sounded like downtown Beirut inside. You know, it was just like, like, what the fuck is going on in here? Yeah. And she had five boys under the age of nine who were just like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they must have went to the Osama bin Laden Montessori or something. They were just like, <laughs> it was just madness. And she was literally, you could see that she was, she was, I mean, uh, the doctor was right. She was on the verge of, of, of a physical and mental breakdown. Mm. Um, so we sat down and she made, a, uh, she made a cup of tea, which I was very grateful for. Um, because I, I was beginning to think I was slipping at that point as well because the mayhem was kind of, it was just, it was just it's like shorter oil and you're like, am I involved in all yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what the? Doors were going and all sorts of stuff were going on. So for me, the, the practice of mindset, the practice of awareness involves uh, form of mindful meditation morning and evening and then introducing mindful moments into your day. The idea being, and I'll get this in a bit more detail after the story, but the idea being that they coalesce. Um, and I'll explain this right after I explain the story, uh, told you this story. So she said, there's no can way can I, you know, do five minutes of meditation in the morning. The youngest one is up at, um, it's actually five children on the line, and the youngest one was up at like half six or something. Mm. She said, it's not going to happen, but I can't do it. It's just, I, I barely drag myself out of bed. Okay, no problem, cool. What about the evening? I'll do it in the evening. When they're gone to bed, I can get five minutes, I'll do it then. But I knew that what was going to be more important for her was that if we introduce those mindful moments during the day. So I said, look, we need to introduce mindful moments. And mindful moments are just where you take something that you're doing anyway and do it with full awareness. Full, full awareness. So like if you're washing dishes, you're fully immersed. And she said, that all sounds lovely, Paddy, but... Like I, you know, I throw the, I throw stuff in the sink, and you know the dishwasher is full, and it gets washed in a second, because one of them, and then she, she didn't use the phrase "lovely children." Yeah, but you know, you know, <laughs> a bit more descriptive. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. You know, one of those ten lovely children is going to start screaming at so you lovely. And I said, well, we need to get, we need something that is going to just bring you to a single breath. I said, okay, do that for me. Get, go up with something that's going to make you aware of a single breath. You're breathing anyway. You're not feeding that up or slowing it down, it's just happening. And so she was pouring out another cup of tea and she went, what happens if I use the word ma? And I thought, this woman is a genius. This woman is a hero. She's a genius. So what she did was, and I was in that house for about an hour at this stage, and I must have heard ma a hundred million times. Ma, 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 ma. Bless you for taking that one, because you know. Yeah. But she did, and she 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 went for it because I think she knew this was her. Yeah. You know. This was it. This was the road to Damascus. <laughs> yeah, or it was the you know it was it was ending up in in yeah. the hospital. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's the turning point. Yeah. So she she was there, and she she knew that she had to do something. So she used the word man. Every time she heard the word man, she would just. Just, I mean, as well as whatever else she was doing, she would just bring her focus and her attention to her in-breath and her out-breath. Just one in and out-breath. But she heard that word so often. In-breath, out-breath. And then what she started to do after a little while was she started to not respond. So the kids kind of go, man! And she she would stop. After about a week, she, she just introduced this stopping where she would stop just for the length of time it took for an in-breath and an out-breath. And then, you know, that slowly went on and maybe it was two breaths then, and maybe, I think she got it up to maybe three breaths. And what that did was, but then when the kids were running in, man didn't respond immediately. There was no immediate response. So it also took away her reactivity of, you know, yeah, yeah, took away yeah. her reactivity. Brilliant. But it also took away their expectation that man was just gonna bounce whenever they, you know, click their fingers. Mm. And, about eight months, seven or eight months later, was the last time I saw her. She was she had she was now on what's called the um, withdrawal program from her medication. So they were going down every week until she was finished with them. Um, she looked incredible. She had, and she was just so much more alive. Oh wow! Just reinvigorated. Um, yeah, vitalized. One single practice. 
that's um, amazing and she was doing she, she uh, to be fair she was up to 20 minutes in the evening with her meditation yeah, she really. loved that you build um, on, and it's the meditation yeah yeah she started at a minute and then built up to and those are the meditations that are in the book as well yeah but um she she was just incredible but you know the most amazing thing about that when i was leaving that i think the last one could have been the second last time one of the elders uh popped his head i think it was the eldest popped his head out of the sitting room and walk him out the hallway and he said that or uh, uh paddy can i talk to you and i said yeah What's the problem? He went, and he just gave me the most, the biggest hug I've ever been given, I think, in my life. And I said, what's that for? And he went, have you seen my man? He said, this is just amazing. Fuck. And then he turned on his little arse and walked back into the kid, into the room. So yeah. That was, yeah, and I thought, yeah, that, that, that's that's, 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 that's fantastic, isn't yeah. it? Oh, I absolutely love it. Uh, I've notes and I could have wrote 50 questions on this book, and I knew it's I'm all over the shop. Last piece of I wanted to ask what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Hmm, <clears throat> the best piece of advice I've ever been given. I don't, I don't know if I was ever given it, but um, I think, y- y- you know, if, if I, I think I might have just conglomerated this from a load of different, okay. you know, influential teachers and people. With them you've gained, a voice yeah. that you can impart with Yeah, um, was that, was that there is, there is nothing more important than my mental well-being. And I would have always seen that as a selfish thing to say, but I now know that when my mental well-being is calm, when it's equanimous, when it's non-reactive, when it's aware, that the, I'm more present for the people that I love and care about more. Hundred percent, I love that. And they're happier. And. The, the greatest piece of advice I think that I could impart to anybody is get yourself to a place where you don't get into the pit so that when your you, you know amazing other half or your kids or people you care about or a blank stranger it doesn't matter comes and they are in your face and they and they are you know they're angry and they're frustrated and they're annoyed get yourself to a point where you never get into the pit because as soon as you get into the pit you can't help them out and the and my greatest sort of driver is that you know when I see you know people I care about or even people that I don't know if I'm being really honest with you at this point, and they're suffering anger, they're suffering frustration, they're suffering annoyance, they're suffering from you, you know stuff that they is just horrible to experience. My main aim and focus is never to get into that pit, not to react, but to wait with kindness, care, love and attention at the side of that pit until they're ready to be helped out. Fantastic. Love it. Don't get in the pit. No. I love analogies. I love visuals. I'm a visualised person. Yeah. I can just see me getting into the pit of craziness because it's not my monkey, not my circus. Yeah. Somebody comes pit. at you and they're frustrated and annoyed. <clears throat> you know, it, 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 it. and it's not a human inclination, actually. It's, 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 it's an abomination that we react to it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I mean, here's somebody we care about and love who is suffering. And our response should not be to cause more suffering. Yeah. By getting into it with them. Our response should be to get ourselves to the point where we are capable and able to stand on the side of that pit with love, kindness, care, and attention mm-hmm. and wait for them. To get to the point where we can help them. Absolutely, and not <coughs> depend on that reptilian brain that just wants to protect itself. Yeah. Defense, defense, yeah, defense. Yeah, I mean, we are a little bit more advanced than that. Yeah, oh, wow. What's the one thing you would like people to take away from this interview after hearing your, your ramblings? <laughs> don't Nonsense. Go, don't go around. Bullshit. Don't, don't be an asshole. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's not a bad place to start, I'll be honest with you. I suppose. The moment you resist 
the situation. The moment you resist the reality, you're suffering. And I don't care who you are, that's an absolute existential fact. The moment you resist reality, the moment you resist awareness, you are suffering. So, if you can, if, 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 if you're listening and you can just let that permeate for a little minute, and then look at when, when that happens, when you resist the reality of the situation in front of you. So, are you, are you happy? Are you joyful? No, you're not, you're suffering. Mm. So, you have only got two options. Accept the situation. You don't have to be happy with it. Not saying you should be happy with the situation, but you can either accept it or change it. What situations can't you accept? I'm going to help you out here. Anything that's happened, you can't change. It's happened. You can't change it. So if it's happened, you only have one option. Accept it. You don't have to be happy with it. You don't. That's not necessary, but you have to accept it. Because you can't change it. Mm. The only situation you can change is right now. So if, you, if there is a situation right now, you're angry, you can change that. Yeah? Mm. If you're pissed off, you can change that. If you are deliriously happy because you've gotten something, but you know that in a few weeks' time, you're going to be really... It's just going to be nothing bad. You can also change your reaction to the not be so deliriously happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, to, to, so to postpone future uh, uh, despair. So, yeah... Um, Acceptance is a big piece, isn't it? Accepting yeah. what is. Just Accepting don't resist is. it. Yeah, resistance yeah. of what is and acceptance of what is. Yeah. And that's where we have our breaks through, agree, isn't it? Yep. But once you get to the point where you understand that resisting reality, resisting the situation, resisting the person, resisting the place, resisting anything is what is the is the cause of all human suffering. Once you get to that and you understand that if it's happened you have to accept it. Don't have to be happy with it, but you have to accept it and get and then move from there. And if it's now, you can change it. And the future is completely uncertain. So fantastic. As I say, I could have wrote fifty questions on this book. We could have went all night on it. I love it for the simplicity. I just want to go through a couple of quotes where I love and I probably get this wrong. Is a Zazen? Uh, Zazen. Zazen. It's just sitting and being and not doing. Yes. Yeah. My my. Uh, when I was taught Zazen, I was told to uh, sit down and shut up. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. And that was it. Nothing else. That was the only instruction I got. Sit down. Shut up. Brilliant. In order, in, I love this. Everything is for change. Nothing is fixed or rigid. No, no. Everything is impermanent. Yeah. Fuck. Because we 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 love certainty. We love. Oh yeah. Well, that's never going to change. Grand. I'm, I'm safe. But if that was the case, life couldn't exist. Yeah, but we don't see that. We just want it to be. We don't want you to change, change your personality. That's change. resistance to change. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're all back to resistance again. I love mm. it. Uh, meditation is not for relaxation. It's about laser focus. Yeah, med- Oh, you know, people say to me, "No, I meditate when I go to bed." No, you don't. You go to fucking sleep when you go to bed, and yeah. you, you know, you might go. Oh my god. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So no, meditation is not about relaxation. It's about focus concentration. Oh, I absolutely love it. Uh, another one was fantastic was where it's gone the faults are busyness you know you know, and I do it all the time I'm eating my dinner isn't yeah. that a wonderful thing I know yes. it, it, eat me dinner texting somebody reading the book get ready for this interview yeah. what will I say to Paddy mm. what will I text what yeah. will I say to my girl for 10 minutes time mm. you know no, just, just, just enjoy your food oh uh, yeah have a look at it smell it taste it chew it enjoy your food and do you know what yeah still get the other stuff done Absolutely. Two more quotes. I love this one. Meditation is not about creating uh, somebody different. It's about befriending who you are. Who you are. Yep. Oh, that's it's about getting to know how this works. Getting to know how the mind works. And when you know how it works, you can then work on it. All right. We're going to finish with the man himself, Albert Einstein. And he says, what did he say? You have two choices. Mm-hmm. Nothing's a miracle or everything's a miracle. Yeah. And you can't, yeah. when you start become mindful and aware, you see colours different, you see the beauty in the kid's smile, you see the magic of, you know, 
everything around you. I know that sounds a bit ippy dippy and arty farty. You also see suffering in other people. Oh, and, I'm and, more receptive to that. And you choose not to add to it. Yeah. Paddy, rather than you're an absolute <laughs> legend. Can we, where can we find you? What, tell us about the book. Where do we get that? So, where two things to plug. First Sorry. of all, ta-da! <laughs> can I just say, did you ever see a book that was more Christmas stocking sized? Uh, hey, hey, see what you done there. See what you done there. See what I did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been practicing that beckoning thing all day. <laughs> but look, it's like you could just you can just imagine it going into yeah. a Christmas stocking. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's called the stocking filler, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so this works the book. That's available. Uh, it should be available in your local bookshop. If it's not, though, they can certainly order it in for you. Uh, it's also on promotion on Amazon at the minute with thirty percent off. So uh, it's very unusual for Amazon to put a promotion in a book before Christmas, but they have, and I'm very grateful to them. So it's uh, available on Amazon at the moment with 30% off. The next thing that I want to ask, uh, if I can, please, Matt, is on the 26th of January, um, 2020, next year, in the City North Hotel, which is just past the airport, um, I'm, I'm doing one of my, um, uh, uh, I'm doing an incredible workshop there, which is uh, called Coping with Chronic Pain. And it's how to use mindfulness and meditation to um, separate pain and suffering. Pain and suffering are not the same. If we can separate them, we, we have a great chance. Now, this is work I've been doing for about 10 years, one-on-one in small groups. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll be doing that out in um, City North, that hotel just, just beside the airport, Dublin Airport, on the 26th of January. Um, and that, that is, that's really important work to me because... Like people suffer so much with pain, mm. and we have, you know, over the last ten years, I, I've I've seen so many people being helped by using uh, mindfulness meditation, and we now have so much research. Like we now know that um, applying mindfulness uh, techniques to pain is as effective in all cases, and more effective in most cases than prescription drugs. Um, wow. and, and that's uncontroverted nobody's arguing with that anymore we have so much research to back that up so those are the techniques that I'll be, I'll be demonstrating 26th of January go to paddybrosnan.com and just click on the images Paddy Brosnan, I'm absolutely oh, look, the interview <laughs> is better than I thought, right? hand on my heart, no blown smoke up your hole you deliver it really, really simplistic you're a bit of crack, you don't take yourself seriously <laughs> You're not up your own hole. I know you used to be an asshole. Yeah. But you're already now your sound. <laughs> uh, and I like that. I don't like someone going in here blowing the smoke and you know, it's simplistic, you know, it's it's easy peasy. Tell me I could do it. Yeah, then here I can I'm getting there. I'm mm. fucking about twenty years away, but I'm on yeah. my way right to it. I'm 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 just gonna put a bet that the knowledge of our geniuses, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Absolutely. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste.